Welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here, and welcome to another video. Those of you who have been following the channel for any length of time may have noticed that I have a slight obsession, let's call it, with finding alternate ways of getting water uh, from the aquarium uh, to some sort of filtration device, and then of course back to the aquarium. A lot of those systems that I've been working with uh, have been air-driven, uh, mostly because I really like air, uh, but also because you can have one or two good-sized air pumps for your fish room, and then they'd run all the aquariums, and then, of course, you can run off bleeder lines to test out uh, new systems or new things you want to try out, and it doesn't really change anything. The last uh, three builds I've done have been water pump ones, uh, mostly because I found a good water pump, and I managed to pick up a few of them for cheap. But every time I make one of those systems, if I want to keep it uh, running for any length of time to test it out, I need a new water pump. And that is, unfortunately, the downside of that. Now, contrary to everything I just said, one of the things I've been wanting to try out is an Archimedes screw. And of course, every time you build an Archimedes screw, you need its own uh, pump, its own motor to run it. It needs to turn. And of course, that is the downside. But I only really want to uh, get one going just to try it out and to see how I like it. And, and once once I get to that point, we'll, I'll figure out if there's anything else I want to do with it. So what I've done up to now is I have cut out um, a bunch of discs. Now, the reason why I've done that is uh, you'll have to bear with me for a minute. There is a number of ways of making an Archimedes screw. First off, you could I could have simply taken a piece of flexible hose, wrapped it in a helical pattern around um, a piece of acrylic tubing like this, or anything else for that matter, and once that's spun and one end is in the aquarium, it is an Archimedes screw. That's, uh, I could have built one as simply as that. The other thing I could have done is I could have taken a thinner sheet of acrylic, uh, a long strip, heat it up and then while it's still malleable I could have twisted and that would also form uh, the helical pattern for the screw and I just have to have an axis for it. But well, the reason why I'm going this route is uh, I've uh, had a little bit extra time which is the only reason why I'm building this at all and I actually came across a woodworker who was doing an interesting stand and what he did is he took a bunch of discs of different types of metal and he uh, glued them all together in this uh, helical pattern. And uh, at that point I was looking at it thinking that that obviously forms a screw. But uh, he turned it down so it was uh, a rod and it made a cool pattern. Uh, but on the process of getting to that, it was at one point looked exactly like the well, the drill bit you see right there. And so I thought this would be an interesting way of going about this. The downside of it is, as you can see, so far I've had to build uh, two jigs for this. Uh, the first one is a little easier than this one. Uh, and the reason why I'm building this one is, uh, I, I, a, little, a couple frames ago you saw me uh, stacking them on the central, uh, pretty much the axis for this. And I thought at that point, if I turn down sufficiently uh, the points on this so they form a nice even uh, contact with the the tube that these are going to go into, there wasn't really enough of a slot left over. So I wanted to add an extra bit of uh, room, let's call it, or a little bit more of a groove once this is all set up. So 120 holes later, uh, it's ready now to stick on the rod, except I wanted to leave, and you can see this is just a one inch rod with a one inch hole, and it is quite stiff. Now, <laughs> I got tired of that real fast. <laughs> because there's a, well, quite a few of these I have to stick on here. So I took about two hundredths of an inch off of this on the lathe, and now it's obviously much easier to work with. Uh, it does spoil the look a little bit, uh, but I'm not too concerned about that right now. If I want to use this as an Archimedes screw, I'm going to need about um, probably about a foot and a half. I'm making six inches currently, mostly because <laughs> this took quite a while to make. And I'm not entirely sure how well it's going to work, so I wanted to uh, get a test size and figure all the ins and outs for that. And then if I like it, this one thing nice about acrylic is I can alter, um, like I can take a little bit off any of the ends 
and therefore I'd, it would be easy to attach it to, uh, to another piece. It's very simple to do. So I wasn't too concerned about making this longer eventually. I just wanted to make sure I didn't like so, go to an awful lot of work, let's call it, plug this thing in, because I've never made one before, uh, and have it not do anything. So, And the other thing I wanted to do, as, I was, as you can see me fiddling with this, is uh, first off, you got to get the helical pattern in the right direction, because uh, most motors run you know, clockwise. If I get it the wrong way, I'd have to run one in the reverse direction. So, as you can see right now, it is actually in, in the wrong, uh, wrong pattern, but I figured that out long before I got into the gluing. I just wanted to test this out right now. Now, the other reason for actually uh, doing this in uh, smaller chunks is I am going to have to stick this on the lathe to get all those points. Uh, uh, I have to mill these down until uh, I form a nice, even um, drill bit pattern, well, helix. And the only way to do that is to make sure that all the end, like from one end to the other, like my left hand right now, imagine that is the chuck that's on the lathe. And then the other side, which is gonna be hanging free, if I don't do anything about that, if it just hung free, there will be enough of a deflection from one end to the other that I won't get that nice even uh, fit. And then that is an issue. See right now it's going backwards. If, if I'm turning it in the wrong direction to make it work, to show you how it, how it works. But I have to have the helix going the opposite direction. But I'll get that straightened out <laughs> before we get to anything important. Now, originally I was thinking of putting it in this uh, tube uh, because, well, the, I had a nice length of it. But once I turn it down to that, I'm basically done. I don't have any more options if I make a mistake. So I'm going to switch over to a larger diameter. And then that will give me the option again, of course, later on to go down to a smaller one. As I said earlier, a lot of work has gone into this at this point. Uh, about half a day's worth of uh, time, actually. And if I mess up uh, when I turn this down, I could end up, well, this will just be a big lump because what I'm doing right now is I'm welding all these into position. And then once they're all welded together, and if I turn it past its usable diameter, uh, it'll end up being, well, I said useless. So I'd be stuck and I'd have to start all over again. And as much as I have extra spare time right now, I don't really want to spend another half a day at the milling machine and lathe uh, just to get back to this point again. So the t going to the extra or the larger diameter uh, will s give me one little safety net. Let's just call it that. So what I'm doing here right now is I'm spreading the teeth out and then I won't get into the math of how to do that. It's not really relevant here. But let's just say uh, you see the little points. So let's call them teeth right now. The further you separate them, the more you have to turn it down to get that smooth uh, drill bit helix at the end. And there's nothing really wrong with that. I just, uh, you can make it um, tighter if you want, and you can make it less. I just wanted to have as much of, I wanted as many turns as I could fit in this uh, from one end to the other. So you'll see how when it all works, if it works for that matter. Uh, when we get near to the end. So this is getting pretty close to the end of what I can do. Uh, I'm not going to be able to run this for you uh, today because there was a bunch of other steps I needed to do. To turn this down, I need to put it on the lathes. So the part that's in my left hand right now is going to fit in the chuck. And then the other end is going to float free. You'll, you'll see as we go along here. And the problem with that is if you, well, it's acrylic, it's not it's not metal. Even metal you have to support as much as you can when you're doing turning. But with acrylic, you have to do even more so. So I had to build an arbor for this so that I can uh, have it supported on both ends uh, when I do the turning. It's going to be a very light turning, but it still has to be held. So this is the, about the final uh, gluing process. So I'm going to go and make the helix. And the other thing I needed to do is... This really has to cure uh, for a long period of time. You know, when I do a lot of the builds for acrylic, I'll just hold it for a minute or two, and then we're pretty much set for simple things. <laughs> but to put it into the lathe, it has to be solid. So it's gonna it, the cure time for that, unfortunately, took it past uh, for Friday morning's video. So it will have to wait till uh, next Wednesday. 
So there's the pattern. I think it looks really cool. I don't have no idea what it's going to work. Let me know in the comments below actually what you think of the possibilities of this doing what I think it should do. And then uh, we'll see you on next Wednesday. I haven't built it yet, so I don't even know yet. Uh, it should be interesting to see for sure. So there you go. It looks nice. Uh, that piece of aluminum rod there. So that's gonna sit, that's where it's going to sit in the chuck. And then I need a piece to fit in on this side. And that will be will keep it from um, uh, bending off uh, true. So this is going to sit in the end stock. And then it's going to spin like this. And I'm going to pare that down to a nice smooth finish. And it has to be smooth. <laughs> and uh, we'll do that next Wednesday. So definitely leave me uh, comments below. Let me know what you think of this. And whether or not you think it's going to work. Because like I said, I haven't done this before. So it'll be interesting to see. So here it is all set up. It hasn't cured yet. I haven't been able to, to like I said, to turn this on and make it work. But I will do that and we will uh, see what we'll end up with. If you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. And always leave comments. I love my comments. And I will see you in the next video. And bye for now.